What is going on everyone? I hope everybody is doing well. This week I'm sharing three vibrant brunch recipes. As always, they're gonna be well-layered recipes which are flavorful for you to go and try out. I'm gonna share with you my corn and sun-dried tomato fritters, which are just something else out of this world. I've also got my pesto stuffed omelet, which has been on repeat. I cannot get enough of this. I'm also gonna be sharing my version of sweet potato toast. It's filling, it's satiating, and it's just a wonderful recipe. September is hands down my favorite month for seasonal local produce now is the time to go and make use of all that summer goodness which is still available it's also that time where we start to welcome in all the warming more kind of dense type vegetables I've been cooking red curry squash for the past couple of weeks and it's really just getting me ready to welcome <laughs> autumn with open arms as always let me know which recipe you'll be trying out first for more of my recipes you can head over to my website and go and check out all of my ebooks I have tons and tons of recipes a lot more ideas for you to go and try out Time for some action. Let's jump straight into this week's first recipe. Let's go. It's only right that we start the video off with a bang. I want to introduce you to this incredible recipe. These are my corn and sun-dried tomato fritters. It was just kind of born from one of those, let me just explore what ingredients I have and just put this incredible recipe together. I have a thing for sun-dried tomatoes at the moment and they really, really complement the sweetness of the corn, the texture of the corn, both just infuse and just work really, really well together. So for these golden fritters, we are of course going to need some sun-dried tomatoes. I love buying my Mine in olive oil obviously I love buying mine in olive oil and I don't waste the oil either you can use the olive oil within the jar um, so yeah don't throw that away because it's delicious but you're also gonna need some corn some sweet corn some corn on the cob if it's not in season and it's easier for you to find in a tin or a jar then that will be fine from September you'll see corn in abundance and it's a reminder of what summer brought us so hopefully yours was vibrant sun filled with texture and flavor and crunch <laughs> so we're gonna be needing some spring onions just the subtle humble spring onion works wonders in fritters in general it's just like a must-have ingredient um, along with these jalapenos these are hot these are local jalapenos they are literally on fire so we're also going to need an egg which is going to act as a binder um, if you don't do eggs then there are many alternatives two eggs that can act as a binder as well. Um, I'm gonna be using some spelt flour. If you're gluten-free, then you could probably opt for a gluten-free option, which would work just as well. Some herbs, of course, lots of herbs. So we're gonna need a little bit of olive oil for the batter. This is gonna keep the batter very um, moist. So we're gonna begin by chopping up all of our ingredients, which includes those spring onions. So finely chop them, um, and then finely, finely chop up the sun-dried tomatoes, followed on by your sweet corn. If you're using corn on the cob, then yeah simply just chop it i chopped up my jalapeno like i said this is spicy so i only used a little bit like it has fire like even without the seeds it's super super hot so grab a large bowl sieve the flour this is just going to make it airy and um, just give the batter the texture that we want place in your baking powder followed by some sea salt some black pepper your herbs throw in the egg followed on by a little bit of milk of your choice i think i used oat milk um, that's what I had in my fridge. Give everything a good, good whisk. So drizzle in that olive oil. Once we've created the batter, we are going to throw in all of our chopped ingredients. So throw in the corn. I like my corn very crunchy. If you'd prefer to steam it beforehand, that's an option. You just need to make sure that you cool it down. So throw in your corn, your spring onions, your sun-dried tomatoes, and give everything a really, really gentle mix. So we need some fresh herbs for the flavor, for the visual effect. Um, you know, dill would work really well. Coriander would work really well. I'm working with parsley for these fritters, but yeah, feel free to like like mix it up it really just changes the whole profile of a recipe and you can really play with your herbs just so it suits your palate and suits what you like so throw in the parsley, um, set the batter aside. You can put it in the fridge until, until you're ready to actually cook it. Um, we're gonna whip up this chili yogurt. It's basically a rata. I chose to use some natural yogurt and I grated in some cucumber. So I added in some fresh herbs, dill and mint. And I threw in some chili, some lime juice, some sea salt, and just gave everything a good mix, setting it aside. So grab your frying pan, drizzle in a little bit of oil of your choice. You really want to make sure that your pan is heated well. So I'd say like a medium to high heat, that's going to be the best temperature for these fritters. So go ahead and spoon in the batter. Depending on the shape and size, the cook time will vary, but just keep an eye on them. You kind of want like a golden, a golden exterior and you want them cooked on the inside too. 
I cooked mine for about two to two and a half minutes on each side. Like I said, I've got this thing with sun-dried tomatoes at the moment and I had some left over. So I always like like a little extra garnish because I'm just extra like that. So I just chopped them up, um, added in some leftover parsley and mixed it with a little bit of olive oil and just like drizzled that over the fritters just for some extra, extra oomph if that's even needed. These golden fritters with so many different layers, so many different textures and tastes and, and flavor elements. These are literally mind blowing. I know this is gonna be one that a lot of you try. So yeah, can't wait to hear what you think of them. So the next recipe is one of those accidental recipes which ends up being one of your repeated, let me make that again, let me make that again. I really, really like this. Oh my God, this is so good and can't get enough of it type recipe. So it's a pesto stuffed spinach omelet. Um, we're gonna fill it with cherry tomatoes and red onions and some yogurt. So we're gonna need some spinach for this recipe. I quite like the subtlety of spinach. If you wanna use any other green, go for it. You can use um, chard, you could use kale, you could use watercress, you could use rocket even. We're gonna need some tomatoes or some cherry tomatoes, whatever you have on hand. Some red onion, which actually makes all the difference for this recipe. I think it's quite an important key feature. So we're gonna need some eggs, preferably just some really tasty, good quality eggs if you can get hold of some. Um, so for the creamy part of this recipe, I always have coconut yogurt, it's like my go-to. So I just randomly tried it with coconut yogurt and I haven't looked back since, it works really, really well. So some coconut yogurt or any other type of kind of thick creamy yogurt that, that you like. We're also gonna need some pesto. This is a shop-bought pesto, so it's like just one of those store covered favorite essential things that I just always have to have because it just goes well with so many different dishes. So some garlic, we're just gonna add a little bit of garlic. We just want it very subtle. We don't want it overpowering. So we're gonna begin by chopping up our ingredients. So finely, finely chop your red onion. And then if you've got a knife that's sharp enough and you feel confident enough with your knife, then slice up your cherry tomatoes. Otherwise you can just chop them into quarters. That will work fine. Or if you're using larger tomatoes, then just chop them up so finally chop up that garlic chop it chop it chop it and then grab your pan um, I heated up a little bit of coconut oil then throw in the garlic the red onions season with sea salt give it some black pepper we want to sweat the onions and garlic for a couple of minutes and then throw in our cherry tomatoes and um, you can turn the heat up a little bit at this stage and throw in your spinach so the spinach is going to cook really really quick it's just going to wilt <laughs> in the heat. So cook everything down and then remove half of the mixture. So remove half of the vegetables, keeping some in the pan because we're going to fill the omelette with these vegetables after you'll see. Okay, so crack your eggs in a bowl, give them a good whisk, give them a bit of sea salt um, and then throw them into your pan uh, and then place back in the spinach, the tomatoes, the red onion. So we want something to kind of fill it with. That's, that's why I like doing it like this. So place in some coconut yogurt, just dotting it around and then swirl over that pesto. So after a few minutes, once the egg kind of becomes a little bit more stiff and you can't kind of swirl it around the pan, you're gonna fold your omelet using a spatula preferably because that makes it a whole lot easier. So I placed my omelet into a 170 degree oven, that's Fahrenheit, for around five to six minutes just to finish it off and this is the finished result how amazing incredible juicy delicious satiating colorful vibrant does this look The final recipe is my take on sweet potato toast and I love it with smashed avocado. We're gonna scramble some eggs. This is like a complete filling um, type of brunch, breakfast, breakfast brunch that I really, really love. We're gonna need some sweet potato. Um, I like to call it toast, but it's definitely not toast. Toast is something that you make using bread. Um, so this is not to replace bread, it's just an alternative, um, just something a bit different if you wanna try it out. So we're gonna season up the sweet potato, make it really, really yummy um, with lots of cumin, um, some garlic powder, some herbs. So for the smashed avocado, um, you can really just work with whatever herbs that you have or um, whatever ingredients, whatever flavors you like. So the queen of summer herbs, I'm gonna be using lots and lots of basil, just chop it up um, with my avocado, maybe add some chili in there, um, lots and lots of zesty lemon or lime. 
So with eggs are your thing, if you enjoy eggs, you can make a scramble, you could make maybe something else if, if eggs aren't your thing, you could get creative. So I start off by chopping up my sweet potato into slices. You want a sharp knife, you want a steady hand, and you just wanna be very careful when chopping the sweet potato. So chop it into slices, place it into a large mixing bowl, or you can place it straight onto the baking tray, whichever is easier for you. With the seasoning, we're gonna throw over some garlic powder, some cumin seeds. It looks like a lot, but trust me, it's all gonna get it's all gonna get worked into these sweet potatoes. Some dried herbs, some sea salt, some black pepper, a drizzle of olive oil. Just give everything a good mix, making sure everything is covered and looking glossy and looking like this. Place your sweet potato pieces, your sweet potato toast, your sweet potato slices onto a flat baking tray. So we're gonna roast our sweet potato for around 20 to 25 minutes on like a 200 degrees Celsius oven. So for the smashed avocado, I placed my avocado into a bowl and then I finally, finally chopped up that basil. It is a good mood herb. Um, I placed in a little bit of jalapeno and some lime juice, some sea salt, and I just smashed, mashed everything, everything together. And then I placed in the basil, followed on by a little bit of chopped red onion. Season at all stages. That's my favorite phrase, season at all stages. I needed a little bit more lime juice and a little bit more salt. So that's what I went and added in. If you're gonna have scrambled eggs, then you can whisk your eggs, heat, um, Again, your fat of choice. I used coconut oil into a pan, um, throw your eggs in, and then just scramble them to whatever consistency, texture, however you like them done, just cook up your scrambled eggs. Um, I like mine done looking like this. Yeah, so remove your sweet potato from the oven. It's gonna be looking golden, and you're just gonna wanna eat them at that point, but hold on, because we're not finished yet. We're gonna top them. So top them with the smashed avocado followed on by the scramble and then I just topped mine with some cherry tomatoes and some more fresh basil that I just had left over. I cracked over a little bit more black pepper, um, drizzled with a little bit more olive oil, obviously. This is a great recipe if you're just feeling like a little change. It's like, mm, 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 every bite, every layer, it's just like yum, delicious. I wanna see what you do with these recipes. If you create your own spin on them, let me know. Tag me over on my Instagram at Tish Wonders. Enjoy creating, enjoy cooking, enjoy eating, um, and I will see you all soon. See ya.